look at Tupac, he is the blueprint to what a a a phenomenon looks like. Man, get off that shit. It's over. He knew how to act. He knew how to make hit records. It's just me against the world. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. But I know that live entertainment is gonna last as long as humanity is alive. Let me ask you a question. It's gonna be something. Um, what do you think? What do you think Tupac would be in this in this internet world right now? Mm. He would. Tupac would be a full. Tupac would be Denzel. Wow. Tupac would be Denzel. They had that kind of credibility as an actor and still could go in the studio and come out with a hit record if he had to. But he was just that smart that I just felt like his talents were, they, they were above a average during those times. Cause you gotta understand, we was all just trying to rap. This dude had already been to school for acting. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why when you look at Tupac, he is the blueprint to what a, a, a phenomenon looks like. Man, get off that shit. It's over. It ain't nothing nobody can do about it. Like, he knew how to act. He knew how to make hit records. The the world. The world. Make records that's deeper than just the club. That's a special artist. I hear Brenda's got a baby, but Brenda's barely got a brain. A damn shame. The girl can hardly spell her name. That's what made him special. But when you look at it, man, you look at Tupacalypse now, you look at these phases, Me Against the World, he had some transitioning that he had to do as well. If you really go back and look at those, how those, because that first Pac was like a, like a militant, like he was talking some real, you know. Oh, you to be a soldier like me. Cracked the took the part of a family tree. My mom is on this shit. My dad. I mean, I think he adapted to the time period of what was going yeah, on. But, mm -hmm. but he was then connected, yeah. When that me against the world came. I smoke a blunt to take the pain out. And if I wasn't high, I'd probably try to blow my brains out. I'm hopeless. He set the tone too. Boy, I, I knew I knew I was a Pac fan was forever. Crazy. You know, because the music and you you right, like juice and all that stuff, you gotta understand he had to have a hell of a balance to do that, what he was yeah, doing yeah, in the time yeah, that yeah, he yeah. did. And still writing hit records. Exactly. You, with no problem. And going through all the beats. You know, I, I just remember that when they locked him up, we had been running with him, they locked him up for that me against the world. And I went to Six Flags out here. And the, the Me Against the World album dropped. And I just remember that was the first time I started seeing people tattoo people, his his album cover on they self. I started seeing people tattoo Tupac and Me Against the World on their bodies. I was like, now see, this deeper. <laughs> this deeper than just a rap song for somebody to go tattoo somebody album cover on their body. On their body. You know what I mean? I was just like, Pac starting to reach another crowd. And yeah. if you look at it, dude, like he never was considered wrong in nothing he was yeah. doing. It was like even when he took a took a picture with gold coins, it was naked. They called Big Daddy Kane out his mind. They never said nothing about Pop doing it. Wow! Because he never did nothing for an image. He did it for that's how he was feeling. And I think every time he did something that was just off the cuff, it came off. Yeah, came yeah. off the right way. Everything after him, I think the industry watched what was cool and they watched what worked for other people and then they started. To me, artists now, they dress them up. Like they get these these stylists to put these wild clothes on them. The clothes don't even match the music. <laughs> like if you gonna wear some wild clothes, like that's a, that a lot of people be like, yo, you know, we seen the Dungeon Family, they started all that in the South. Yeah, we yeah. did. But at the end of the day, we had George Clinton sitting in the house with us while we were making the music, and he was telling us, hey, man, how you going to make music like this and then go to Greenbrier and the Foot Lock? <laughs> like, he, he thought that was crazy. Yeah. So, he, so he said, man, when you make music like this, you got to make sure your music and your clothes match your music. And, bro, you're not going to get what matched the music and Foot Lock. Wow. So that's why me and Dre started. I started going to the clothing, to the to the fabric shop. And then that's when I just started, I started making my own clothes. And 
once we got to Nashville, we was doing a, a, a music conference, and it was Bad Boy and Organized Noise because we was both signed to Arista. And I remember that was the first time I wore one of my outfits, and everybody was just like, that shit look crazy, Gil. But I knew, I said, it might look crazy. But it only looked crazy because you don't know what I'm doing. What I was doing was I knew that we was new. Our dialect was new. Our music was new. But I knew one thing. If we did, if I wore the craziest shit, you was going to remember me. Back ice. Now you know and I know. Wow, and that's that's so true. And that's that was, how I remember no. Andre three thousand. <laughs> yeah. I promise you, because he does the same thing. Well, you gotta understand. Even when I interviewed DJ Chose uh, the other day, he said that because they asked him. He was one thing he said was he was like, I think you was asked. Mm-hmm. Well, it wasn't you. It was it was actually my issue mm-hmm. reality TV, and it was like. Uh, you know, he was like, man, if I had to do all over again, I don't think I was memorable in these Enough. moves with NBA right. Young Boy. And mm-hmm. I was in there with, uh, you know, all these Fredo Bangs and all of them. I, I said, what would you do different? He said, I'd have came out like J.D. did at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Every time I'd have had on something yeah, to make them step. remember me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he, and that's what you just said. Mm-hmm. So And, and that's, that's, that's being ahead of your time, too. Because a lot of people wasn't thinking like yeah. that. You know what I mean? I told Mike Jones mm-hmm. the same thing when he came out and he kept saying his number and all that. That's advanced. That's yeah. marketing, yeah. bro. Well, you know, paying, <laughs> I was paying three thousand dollars a month. Yeah, just to keep what I was doing as an experiment at the time. Okay. I didn't have Instagram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Co-sign my but you movie. killed it by making. I didn't it. have TikTok to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was just straight. You're but the job. thing yeah, is, yeah, yeah. you, you see, was the only saying? one doing it. But see, I was I was all alone. But see, at the time, it was good because I was by myself. Yeah, there wasn't yeah. nobody else that's, oh, you trying to do it too? No, you nobody. Trying, it wasn't nobody. like you were eight of us trying to do yeah. it all at the same time. No, was y'all were doing your own thing. Yeah, I yeah. was doing my own thing. And it go back documented, 02, 03, 04, 05. It's documented. 05. It's documented. So document. back to what I was saying, I had another number, single or wireless. Yeah. It was killing me. I was happy to get on that microphone and tell the fans, hey man, y'all holler at me two eight one four five five one five eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, like, why you always giving out your number? Well, cause some people booking fake Mike Jones shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta keep my brand right, so I'm gonna give you my number. Mm-hmm. It's like you giving out a business card. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah, yeah, I do it. That's, that's, that's you gotta keep. Yeah, that's the only way you are gonna stay on their mind. Unique hustle for unique sure. Hustle. Gotta unique have hustle. it's a unique hustle. Hey, if yes. somebody say anything that's against unique. Call us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. So what's different than you giving out a business card and I put it out on the song? Yeah. You yeah, see what I'm saying? He, 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 he was a G for that. That was so and, cold when he did that. <laughs> I was like, man, that man put his number on there, man. Yeah. $100,000 okay. a bill a month. And I heard when you said in a video, in, in an interview, because you were talking about Big Boy and Andre 3000, mm-hmm. and that for me growing up, when I was watching them, all I could see was Andre 3000. That's who I would always listen to mm-hmm. and love. But you you were talking about how great Big Boy was and what mm-hmm. he did and how he contributed to Outkast. Yeah, Big Boy to me is the anchor. Like Dre is the star child. Big Boy is is, is the anchor. Like uh, uh, if, if you used to think Big Boy Willie D and, and, and you know, mm-hmm. like Dre, that's Scarface. That's you know right. what I mean? Uh-huh. It's like, that's what it is. And I think that every group needs those kind of striking dynamics to be a great group. And um, if, you, if you just go back just to the, to the first album and then go to the second album, Big Boy Big really shine. Yeah. Well, uh, get up, stand up, so what said you pinhead? See, when I was a youngster, you used to wear them country broke heads. He was shining. Me and you, them first singles was big on the hook. Me and you. Your mama and your cousin too. Rolling down the street. That nigga here was doing like that. Yeah, like, <laughs> 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 like, that nigga was on it and he was moving to it so smooth. And I'm going to tell y'all yeah, the stuff. first, this is when I knew we was big. This is when I knew they were big. We had already went platinum, but our first concert, big concert, they were like, we going to Dallas. What? Dallas was the first place Outkast broke Greg Street. Really? Greg Street is who broke Outcast, Outcast. in Dallas. That's hard. What year man. was that? Mm, that yeah. had to be the first year. That was the first year we was out. That was like 95, probably that summer. Because mm-hmm. we came for we came for the uh the radio show 
Outkast was performing with Tony, Tony, Tony at, oh, the, at, at, the, at the Dallas Stadium. Oh, wow. And that was the first time I walked on the field, and I was like, I looked at I said, boy, y'all in did something now, bro. <laughs> like, boy, we at the Dallas Stadium, bro. And, we, and then, that was the first place we knew, and, and then that's when Greg Street moved to Atlanta. Oh, yeah, yeah I remember yeah. when he left. I that's, remember when he left. That's Outkast. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk.